So Token Rabu and Monster Strike. Actually, guys, I don't want to do this. Like, you know, like Monster Strike and Token Rabu. Not, not a lot of people are actually looking into this. What makes you think that? But we have um, the poll and everything. Are you, are you judging all the people who want a husband dose? You gotta do it, man. No, but... For the husband dose. But... Oh. No, Vanguard is still Vanguard. You owe it to the fans who want to listen to your opinions about Vanguard, uh, whether it's collaboration or not. Okay, okay, yes, okay. Because husband do, husband do. Okay, husband fine. Do, husband do. Okay, fine. For the husband dos and for the wife dos. Okay, so. Mm. All right. <coughs> All right. Here we go from the top again. So. <clears throat> mm. Right. So token Rambo and monster strike. Ah! And hey, you can. Sarah's um, now. We need help. Step right away, you need people hiding Hi everybody, this is CVGS, I'm the captain here and on this recap for the Vanguard livestream for Overdress on the 20th of April 2021, we'll be looking at the reveals and sharing our collective thoughts on them. With DBT01 released in Japanese, players are already looking ahead to the boost we'll be getting in the Special Series Festival Collection 2021 coming out in May 15, as well as the second booster set coming out on June 25th. The new cards that are releasing in the special series are actually being released as card of the day reveals on the Japanese Vanguard website. So we'll be taking a look at those and what we can expect for all 10 builds currently available in Overdress in a little bit. So Token Rumble and Monster Strike have gotten release dates. Token Rumble has a title trial deck and title booster releasing on May 22nd, while Monster Strike has two title trial decks and a title booster releasing on July 23rd. This is interesting to note because that means that the main booster sets for Vega Overdress are going to be spaced in between these collab boosters. Maybe these collab boosters can be premium collection boosters, maybe lyrical monasterial boosts, thereby giving all kinds of players some breathing space for our wallets. On the live stream, they revealed the right line for the title trial deck, which is for Kashu Kiyomitsu. For those of you that aren't familiar with the changes to Vanguard ever since Token Rumble was released years ago, I'll give you guys a quick recap. We have entered a new format in Vanguard called Overdress and all of your cards you currently own are in what is called the Premium Format. These new cards in Overdress that are coming out can be used in the Premium Format while your older cards cannot be used in the Overdress Format. Basically, there's only new and old together or new and new only. There is a new rule added called the Right Deck where 4 of your cards from your 50 card deck can be placed aside to form your Right Deck. This is actually a rule that's only available in the new and new only format, the overdress format, and must contain different grades, basically grade 0, 1, 2, and 3. You can use your right deck by discarding a card from your hand and then take a card that is one grade higher than your current Vanguard and ride it. The term right line is used to explain the set of cards that goes together in that right deck, and when we go over their skills, you'll start to make sense of things. And these new Kasu Kiyomitsu cards that were revealed in the live stream earlier this week are the right line for the Token Rumble title trial deck. We'll start by going through the Grade 0 Kasu Kiyomitsu. Normally we don't cover this because it's a generic starter skill, but its auto skill is on the Vanguard Circle when this unit is rolled upon. If you went second, you get to draw a card. The Grade 1 is Kasu Kiyomitsu Sento. Its skill is when this unit is rolled upon by Kasu Kiyomitsu Toku. Look at the top card of your deck and put that card onto the top of your deck or into your soul. So when you ride Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku on this, you can essentially check what you have on the top of your deck and decide if it's something that you want. Its continuous skill on the Regard Circle is during your turn this unit gets plus 2k power, making it a 10k booster. The Grade 2 is Kashu Kiyomitsu Toku, which has the skill when rode upon by Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwami. It's a lot of case over there. Search a deck for up to 1 Yamato no Kami, Yasusada, Reveal it and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck. Toku has the same continuous skill on the Regard Circle as Sento which is plus 2k power during your turn. To briefly talk about Yamato no Kami Yasusada, which you are able to fetch from your deck, it has an X skill on the Regard Circle whereby paying Counter Blast 1 for that turn, this unit gets plus 5k power and if your Vanguard is Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame, which it should be, it gets plus 10k power instead. The last of the right line is the Great Tree Kashu Kiyomitsu Kiwame. Its continuous skill on the Vanguard Circle is that if you do not have any face-up cards in your damage zone during your turn, this unit gets plus 10k power. Its other skill, a once per turn X skill on the Vanguard Circle by paying counter blast 1, so blast 1, look at the top card of your deck, put it at the top or the bottom of your deck and draw one card. The right line provides good ways to not only fetch cards from your deck to put into play, but also plays with you checking what you have on top and doing something with it by repositioning where that card is. 
on top of the power boost it gets by having no face up cards in your damage zone and it's a strong right line for any token Rambu fan to enter the era of overdress in Vanguard. In the coming weeks, we are going to be finding out more about Token Rambu cards in the title booster. So if you would like to know more about what's coming up in May, this is a good place to be. Moving on to another collab happening in Vanga, we have initial information about the Monster Strike collapse. As mentioned on July 23rd, we are getting two Monster Strike title trial decks as well as the Monster Strike title booster. Not much is known yet about what we can expect from these sets play-wise other than some visuals on what the cards will look like, both the normal variant as well as the MSR or Monster Strike Red. Before I continue, I'd like to point out that both the Token Rambu and Monster Strike title trial decks will have power counters included with the trial deck. So to every person over the 3 years since we got them who has ever asked us about how we got our power counters used in the fight videos, this is the first ever official inclusion of them that you can get. The last point that was made about the Monster Strike Collapse sets is that they won't have any established right lines to coincide with the spirit of the mobile game. On top of that, Monster Strike will have a set order, Gacha Ridora, that apparently is a gacha mechanic built into the deck as part of its gimmick. How interesting! Now we can suck in rolling on the things that I want in Genshin, Dissidia, and Vanguard. We'll have more information next week on what the gacha mechanic for Monster Strike is, so as I said before, this is a good place to find out more. Now for those that are playing the main sets of Vanguard as our polls have clearly shown, we'll be going over the cards revealed thus far for the special series booster coming out in mid-May. Eugene and Nirvana players have Rough Eating Dragon Hungersaurus and Blaze Maiden Mirin to look forward to whereas Dark States has Diablo Boy's Jared and Degraded Age Dragon. We also got Aurora Battle Princess Spark Limone and Twin Press Smasher for Brand Gate as well as Alfion and Gold Garum for Kenta Sanctuary. At the time of this recording, we haven't got the confirmed full name translation for Alfion just yet. There's only Stokia left to be revealed at the time of this recording, and those reveals will be brought forward to next week's recap video. So you can find our initial thoughts on them when they release tomorrow on our Twitter at CrossbonesVGS. Rough Eating Dragon Hungersaurus's continuous skill is during your turn, this unit gets plus 5k power, and if your opponent has a front row rearguard, this unit cannot attack the Vanguard. For me, I like the fact that his design idea was that it's meant to be an ideal choice to pay the cost for Eugene. Eugene's retiring skill requires that he rest two rearguards and what better choice than Hungersaurus? Between choosing a potential booster and a unit whose own limitations makes him a carefree choice to rest, the Devil Advocate's proposition could make this card worthwhile. But then again, his only benefits has always been his easy condition to be a 15k attacker, especially since you can smack that 15k or more into that rearguard to make the choice of attacking a rearguard carefree. Blaze Maiden Mirin has the auto skill on the regard circle. When your unit with the overdress ability attacks, by putting this unit into the soul, choose one of your units with the overdress ability and it gets plus 5k power until the end of the turn. There's a bit of a debate here because I can see how Mirin's potentiality can make this card viable, but the end result doesn't change the fact that there are other stronger choices. Given that it's a 6k booster on its own, Mirin as such wouldn't change the numbers all too much on a Virena, Virena Arcs, or Virena Valiant. But the potential here is that you can choose any unit with the overdress ability at any time. So if it's looking like your opponent will be able to guard off Virena or Virena Valiant, uh, you can hold off on her for the next turn and then pop it off when the coast is clear for a more high powered attack. And while you can see benefits of having more soul for Virena's retire with Mirin, Playtest has already shown that Virena Valiant, possibly the best choice to add 5k power to, adds little to him. So that already speaks a lot for Virena and Virena Arcs. Diablo Boy's Jared. Man, after all these years, I somehow ended up with a Jared in my life again. Jared's once per turn X skill on the Regard Circle is by paying Counter Blast 1 and Soul Blast 1, choose one of your units with Diablos in its card name, and it gets plus 10,000 power until the end of the turn. His other skill, an auto on the Regard Circle, when this unit attacks, if you are in final rush, your opponent cannot intercept until the end of that battle. The Intercept Deny can prove to be a little game-changing since Jared can attack twice with Bruce's We Stand. That power boost to violence Bruce Eden himself, Steve even, can definitely change how much more guard your opponent needs to put down to stop you. The Greater Age Dragon, when this unit is placed on the Regard Circle, if your soul has 5 or more cards, by discarding a card from your hand, choose one of your opponent's back row regards and retire it. 
This one feels a bit weird because Barrel Magnus on his own already has a strong removal. Adding this to the Barrel Magnus deck does add early potential to remove once you have 5 cards in your soul, but unless you're struggling to get 15 in the soul, which you shouldn't be, this is a weird consideration. On top of that, it's also quite a weird addition to Violence Bruce, giving him a removal in a deck with an inconsistent soul count. Violence Bruce is also a power based deck, so the thought of slotting him in makes me feel a little funny about it. So. We should consider that these cards from the festival collection could be a tease for any new potential right lines in DBT02 which will do different things than what we have already seen thus far. Then we have the new Aurora Battle Princess, Spark Limone. Her auto skill on the Regard Circle, when its units attack hits, you choose up to 2 unit cards from your opponent's drop zone and imprison them in your prison. I find this to be both a blessing and a curse for Sarah Snow players, as while you may endanger yourself by choosing to prison cards that your opponent can fetch back by paying the prison cost, it's a great utility card for helping Sarah Snow achieve a continuous skill during the battle phase. As long as you're careful with crafty opponents, Spark Limone does look like a much needed unit for Sarah Snow, providing on hit threat and an alternative source for prisoners. That are alive, you are coming with me. The other unit in Brand Gate for the Festival Collection is Twin Press Smasher. Once per turn, X skill on the Rearguard Circle by Color Blast 1 and resting this unit, choose one of your opponent's front row rearguards and retire it. Another nice card that adds a good niche skill to a power base deck in Office and works slightly better than what you could do with Degraded Age Dragon in Violence Bruce. We can also see this used well in Sarah Snow to remove more pesky units that you wouldn't want your opponent to bail out from prison. We'll finally add today's card of the reveals for the festival collection which is 4 Keter Sanctuary. We'll start with Alfion, whose once per turn skill on the regard circle is that if you have 3 or more Greek 3 units, by paying Counter Blast 1, for that turn this unit gets plus 5k power and if you persona right this turn, draw a card. Needless to say, this is another Greek 3 unit to fill the ranks of Bastion's lineup. The conditions aren't hard to pull off and you get the nice benefit of drawing a card if you persona right this turn. Plus with it being an X skill, you don't actually have to activate him when you possibly can since you would want the additional draw. The last reveal is Gold Garen when this unit is placed on the Regard Circle. By paying Soul Blast 1 and calling Grade 1 unit from your hand to the Regard Circle, for the turn the unit called by the cost gets plus 5k power. I've hardly seen a skill phrase like this but it does make sure that you have a Grade 1 as a condition first before you can follow through with the power. While intended to be the boost for Hex Orb Sorcerers, this card can be used in Bastion if you haven't already decided to populate your entire deck with great trees as most players have. The final thing that we'll be mentioning in this recap is the new promo card for Arco Force and Mega Colony which are the monthly tournament promos you can receive during official tournaments in the month of May. This time round, we ain't gonna leave our premium brothers and sisters behind. Tyranny Brave Shooter's Auto Skill. At the end of the battle that this unit attacked the Vanguard, if it's the first battle by paying Counter Blast 1 and sending this unit to the bottom of the deck, look at the top 3 cards from your deck, choose one among them, and call it to additional Regard Circle, and send the rest to the bottom of the deck, in any order. Sounds like wet paladins, am I right? <laughs> Not much I am able to add here, it's a good card to rack up those battles that you need for your other units, among some of the others like Argos who has the same skill. Having this makes it so that you can reliably find a unit with the first battle ability to kick off your series of waves. Vulgar Mutant Stamping Red Skill, when this unit is placed on the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle by paying Count Plus 1, choose one of your opponent's Rearguards without the Cradle Marker and put a Cradle Marker on it. If you don't, you get to draw a card. It's continuous skill also on the Vanguard and Rearguard circle. During your turn, if your opponent has a Rearguard with the Cradle Marker, this unit gets plus 6k power. Again, not much that I can say that adds to the conversation. It's a nice card to add to your Gridora deck in V Premium or Premium Standard to further enhance your capabilities with the Cradle Marker. And that is all from the live stream Man Card of the Day reveals for the Festival Collection 2021. So what do you guys think? Has the Sword Boys Return and Monster Strike keep your eyes peeled for May and July? What about what we're going to get in the Festival Collection Booster? Leave your comments below. And if you want to be part of the live conversation with us on Overdress, we're on Twitch for the Tuesday live streams and Wednesdays for our discussion streams on YouTube. So be sure to follow us on Twitch for our gaming streams, slam that like and subscribe button and ring the ding the bell so you can get notified of all of our videos when they release, be it for Vanguard or Battle Spirits. Be sure to follow us on all of our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We also have a Discord as well where you can find myself, Dempster and Leon on most nights. 
If you like what we do here and want to support us directly, you can join us for our membership where you can be like one how law, that you angry Eto and seven with K and have access to our meme emotes and badges during our premieres and live streams. Last thing to note is that we'll be hosting a Vanguard Overdress Japanese online tournament this Sunday on Discord at 8pm GMT plus 8. The prizes you can compete for is the DBT01 booster set. We're still preparing the tournament Discord server at this moment right now, so stay tuned to our socials for news on how you can join, compete and have fun from wherever you are in the world. So with that said, thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!